So in preparation for our session with uh, Pete as our worker, industrious worker model, I thought I'd do something on the virtues of tracing paper. So I'll have some uh, tracing paper for you in the studio and if you're doing things at home, hopefully you can get hold of some. So tracing paper was Degas' preferred surface for drawing on in charcoal and pastel. It's a great surface to work with because initially it's very smooth. You can move things around, as I'll demonstrate. Then you can spray it with fixative and that gives it a terrific tooth, which will allow you to put more charcoal on and also um, to put on pastel. But there are other virtues as well, because you can do a drawing like this. You can try it on different surfaces. What does it look like with a different background? And of course, you can even turn things around. And that's something Dega did a lot of. He uh, worked with particular poses and then turned them over and found that there was something advantageous about the reverse pose. And I suppose he probably would have just drawn on the back the way we do what we used to when we use tracing paper. You can also use it um, as a way of combining figures and subjects. So here's my loom from the museum and I can just work a bit it's like a transfer. Do you remember transfers? We used to put Star Wars, Star Wars figures onto, or whatever it was. Uh, anyway, so here he is working on the loom. Uh, and I can just play around with that and see what, what goes best. So that, that could be a shortcut to composing. And coincidentally, so here's our worker working on a loom. And I was looking for some photographs, which would be reference material for me making this video and years ago we had a loom in the studio somebody had left it behind and good old Graham Martin who'll do anything really uh, set about painting and uh, brushing and measuring the loom in his uh, his boiler suit or his dungarees doing some great work of poses so I'll use them as my references for this uh, this demonstration so I'm going to work small and I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, how tracing paper can be used with charcoal and, uh, and pastel, of course. Uh, so I'll put it onto some white paper for now so I can see what's what. So I'll work with this particular figure. And as I've said, it's, it's a tremendously smooth surface and therefore doesn't really have any particular tooth. So that, you know, if you wanted to just keep drawing, that, that presents certain frustrations because uh, there's a point where it won't take much more material. But I think there are, you know, if you can incorporate that into a drawing process, then there are ways in which actually that's got tremendous virtues possibilities um, the possibility for example of <coughs> smudging it and uh, abstracting softening taking you know taking things away so maybe I'll, I'll put the loom on as well just while we're at this so I can do some lines like that eyes half closed I should put in a pattern of tone And as I say, it's very satisfying to work with because of this, this smoothness and the whole business of drawing complicated machinery also works quite nicely. So I can just smudge that and move that around, lose some of the, the detail or even some of the things I don't like. And you'll see, if I try and build this up again, it won't take very much more. You know, it'll just sort of sit on the surface. So I can do all that. But equally, um, I can erase, I can subtract. And the amazing thing about um, tracing paper, I think, provided you sort of keep cleaning your rubber, you can take most 
you can clean the surface completely. And actually, I don't really know any other papers, <clears throat> any other surfaces that give you that. Most other surfaces, you know, you, you get some sort of staining, even, even if you get most of the material off. So that's a great advantage. As I say, you have to sort of clean the rubber a bit now and then, otherwise it starts to smear. <clears throat> but it can, it really can be moved around. Although I suppose another technical thing, where you rub out, it does, it does affect the surface. So, you know, if I've rubbed out here, and if I put more charcoal on, you can see my, the, you can see the rubbed marks. Anyway, these are all things that you can work with. I don't think they're um, anything to, to, you know, not recommend the material. So you do a certain amount of drawing at this very fluid stage. And then if you want to build up more uh, and it won't take anymore, then the thing to do is to spray it. When you spray with the, the hairspray, the fixative, it actually applies a rough tooth to the surface, the surface of the drawing. So let me get in the dungarees and I'll do that. So I'll spray this on screen because I think it's worth saying that um, because tracing paper isn't absorbent, because it's this very smooth surface, you don't want much fixative at a time. And actually, I think I've overdone it there. I don't know how well you'll see it, but it, it sits on the surface rather than soaking in, which is why I think you get such a good tooth, but um, it quite quickly puddles if you overdo it. And that would also be interesting. You could do some great things, I'm sure. Move it around while it's still wet. Look at that, that's a new media, which is um, hairspray and charcoal. So you could do things like that, but I won't. I'll let it dry because I have other things to show you. So it takes a bit longer to dry and it's, it's really worth waiting for it to dry, obviously, otherwise you get into difficulties. But now it's going to behave differently to the materials. So that you can see that really is sealed. Nothing is smudging and probably nothing will rub out. So I can do more charcoal. I can work to refine this. You know, the, the, I'll get more of a more of a black now, if that's what I'm after. So that's always a great process that you can take a drawing to a certain level and then wait a bit and then add, add a, essentially what is emphasis. And that emphasis hopefully will be the important things. What did Degas say? Don't draw what you see. Draw what you want others to see. So what is it we want people to see that, what do I want them to see in this drawing that I will add emphasis uh, using the second layer of marks. So that's what I can do with charcoal. I can go from black, from, from greys to blacks. Uh, and uh, as I say, introduce that emphasis or I can work a bit with pastel. So I could have sprayed that charcoal or I can just start to build it up now in, uh, I think it's worth doing it in a kind of hatched way because I have got this tonal underdrawing, of course, and um, that can be, that can be allowed to show through you can also mix charcoal and pastel quite well. And um, the other thing that's quite interesting is if, because that is showing through, because that layer is showing through of the charcoal and the, uh, the areas of charcoal and the areas that don't have charcoal, if I put a kind of covering, of something colourful, like this flesh tint, 
then in places it will pick up a, a shadow combination from what's underneath, like in the, the front of the face. And the places where white paper is showing through, it will um, it'll come through lighter. So that is a real tonal underdrawing, which if you apply the material in this hatched, broken way, you can take advantage of. So there is a pastel layer. top of the charcoal there. So, you know, Degas-wise, uh, I would go on spraying that, probably, and uh, even building up layers of different colours. But I can also do other things, like turn it over and see if that's a better way of working. Can I do something together with He's a bit big for that one. But I could even have a bit of a, a multi-figure combination. Him working in the foreground. So there's a lot you can do with this. So I'm going to give it one more spray and just try a second layer of colours. So that's the second spraying and it's gone a bit darker which I think is always interesting because you can actually incorporate that into your way of working. So I think this is the same blue. And what I'm doing now is I'm using it much more selectively just to reintroduce a little bit of color to certain places. I mean, it's amazing. It really has been fixed, but none of that, none of that will smudge. Uh, and I just want to bring out a little bit of colour here and there. So I'm, a, I'm basically topping up the lighter areas <clears throat> and leaving the darker subdued areas with just one layer. And of course if I sprayed this and these heightened effects would sink again so I won't spray it again I'll leave it at this and, and and that works okay I mean it will smudge if I rub it but because there's quite a tooth I think um, the pastel adheres quite well and doesn't necessarily need to be fixed provided you don't jump on it so, there is a, a second layer, and I've got my figure as a reference. I think there's some nice depth to it because of those layers. And I can, as I've shown you, turn it around. I can try it on some other surfaces. That's quite nice, that really suits it. And I can you know, put him to work in different environments. So um, hopefully the internet is down at the studio at the moment, which creates problems for Zoom, but hopefully it'll work out by Monday um, and we'll have a some of you will be in the studio with Pete and we'll have a whole variety of poses. He's going to have a hard hat and a high visibility vest and boots and things. Uh, and we'll get him doing some industrious poses. And you may have some suggestions that you'll let me know about before Monday morning. I'm hoping to have it on Zoom. I'll certainly record it uh, or at least take photographs uh, so that I can um, supply you with something uh, if, if it doesn't work out. Okay, so here's to tracing paper and see you tomorrow.